Good morning. How's it going, guys? Um, we haven't done one of these, like, just talking to the camera videos in a while. Uh, it's just because I really, I hate saying it, but I, I don't have time. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of people that it's like, they're like, oh, it's so easy to make a video. Just hit the record button. Blah, 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 blah. Excuses. That's all I hear. It's like, uh, you have no idea what it's like in a day in my life. You know, that would be a good video. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, so I recently talked to someone for quite a while about, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people, uh, other business owners, other game store owners, other like people that want to own a game store. There's so many people that ask me if I do mentorships, like to for people to pay, and I, I don't. I just don't think I can provide enough value for someone to pay me a service to teach them to do what I do. Because in the end, it's everybody's situation is different and unique. Like my situation is way different than anyone else's. Uh, and that's kind of going to be the topic of this video. Like my situation and your situation are completely different. Me and this person, we talked about, he talked about how he, you know, he's in all these groups, these Reddit groups, these uh, other business owner groups, and, you know, he's taking information from them, and you, you, you can't, you can't do that, because it just, it, you're going to be spinning your wheels and just going in circles. In the end, nothing beats trial and error. Because when something doesn't work, you learn really quick. And you correct it really quick. But if you're listening to all these bozos on these groups and forums that don't know their ass from their elbow, it's going to be a bad time. Because... Like I said, your situation is different than theirs. They might be going for a different thing than you're going for. They might be going for in-store play only, and that's their focus on just that. Which is good, but it does not pay the bills. Because to be completely honest with you, in-store play, you push a booster box and maybe you sell a few things of sleeves. It's not, it, it doesn't really pay the bills. Sure, the margins are a lot better, but let's say I get, on a Friday night, two pods of draft going. You know, that's 16 people. You're like, whoa, that's, that's pretty good. Not really, because, like, sure, you're, you're pushing two booster boxes, but you're making maybe 60 bucks off of the... the off of the booster boxes with the prize support factored in. It it's it's not <laughs> it's not pushing the needle. Uh, yeah, sure they'll buy a few things here and there, but like that which helps, but it's not what like really catapults your business into you know a big company. You have to do mass amounts of sales high volume online and I remember when my video back last year got shared on MTG finance it's just this the one of the I'm gonna say it but like I know people a lot of people go on there it's one of probably one of the worst toxic and ass backwards things I've ever read in my life about just nonsense it's 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 a group for players, not for businessmen or people that want to open a business. So if you if you want if you want to open a business in this industry, don't go on MTG Finance, please. <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. 
I remember one comment kind of stuck with me. Um, because he said, what did he say? Jesus Christ. Um, oh, saying that, um, because I was doing a box opening of Strixhaven just to show you, like, what you can expect of doing, like, say, a three-case booster box. And it, we made very little bit. We made, like, $100. But we opened three cases. <laughs> I'm talking about open. If I, if I did a pallet of that, times that by this X this and that, and with all the, you know, automation and the, the robotics you have at your fingertips that you're able to get, you know... You could do a three, four hundred box booster opening over the course of a weekend with enough help. Sure, payroll, whatever, but you know, it is what it is. These are costs of doing business. So he he said, "This is un." Oh, I thought he said, he said, "I'm trying to word it, hundred percent like how I remember it." But this is unfortunately the route that most game stores take, and this is why they all go out of business. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, Jesus Christ. It's like, no. The reason why most game stores go out of business is because they shouldn't have opened a business in the first place. 99% of people who open game stores shouldn't because they do it as a hobby. They want to build a community that word gets thrown around a lot and it's it's anytime someone you know you walk into a game store and they're like yeah we just want to build a really good community it's like it's kind of like they have an ulterior motive kind of it's 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 kind of i don't know it's just it rubs me the wrong way of of course you want to you know foster a good safe clean nice environment for people to play but you're also a business and you have to make money and your customers should understand that it, it shouldn't be a hangout for people to come and just hang out and play there should be some sort of commerce involved <laughs> in any business and that's just how it works and people need to understand that and which is why when people throw around the community word and very casual, non nonchalant ways of doing business, that's why things don't work out for those people. Now, I'm not saying it can't work out. Sure, their situation might be different than yours. They might be really well off and it doesn't even matter. You don't know. You're like, oh, well, this store doesn't charge for anything and has, you know, barely any... They match TCG player and match this and match that and charge nothing for singles. You know, they might be a millionaire. You don't know. They might just... They might be retired collecting four or five pensions and they don't care. And that's great. G go to that store. But, you know... There's other stores that do need to make business and do need to make money because of living. I need to live. <laughs> I need to, you know, of course, you know, things cost money. A house, a car, um, basic necessities of life. These cost money. And, you know, not for nothing. Magic is not, you know, a magic Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not a necessity it's a luxury good so they cost money they're expensive sometimes sometimes uh they're not but uh those are the sets we don't talk about and so me and him were talking and basically i was trying to you know guide him as best as i could or give him some advice because I like doing that. That's something. I don't know. It, it makes me feel good to help other game stores because I remember what it was like to open up, be scared out of my mind. I, I mean, 
I don't want to think. I want to say I was scared out of my mind. I was just unsure, and I was like, "That's why I took the online portion of it." Because, like I say in a lot of my videos, you cannot rely on people coming in your store. I remember my first eight nine months I was open. There was there was multiple day stretches where not a single person came into my store, and I had to figure out what to do to make this money. Even though I had a bunch of money saved, I had a big safety net you know I, I have support at home from my wife she's very you know she's very good with you know everything so like my situation is a lot different than yours you know you might be relying on making money to support your whole family which if you are with doing this I highly 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 I would try and say don't do it do not open a game store because I'm still barely paying myself I've been almost open two years like I'm still barely paying myself so if you need to rely you have family you have kids you have you know people that rely on you I would say don't do it be completely honest with you because you're gonna need a shit ton of money, uh, a shit ton of time, and just in the end, it might not be worth it. But you might hit the groove. I don't want this to be a downer of a video. Everything might click, and you'll just blow up. Which you know, I we haven't blown up. Let's, let me not be tooting my own horn too much. But we're doing okay. We're chugging along. But if I'm not in a constant state of stress, I feel as though I'm not growing. Which is why I'm probably going to be renting another warehouse. So <laughs> that, I'm like, you know what? It's been three, four months. We're, we're grooving along. We're doing good. Let me throw a wrench right into the cogwheel. So... Yeah, I might be renting another warehouse to do just um, the TCG Player SYP side of things and TCG Player Fulfilled Direct. Um, that might be just out of the warehouse. It's a smaller warehouse. It's around 2,000 square feet. It is a little expensive, but I feel as though um, with getting as many eyes on you as possible... TCG player with SYP and direct is probably the best way of just free advertising. Since I've done SYP and everything like that and just selling everything and doing like box openings like crazy, I've had like just random people um, messaging me on the game on the store's Facebook page. Like because we do anywhere between, I would say, um, probably right now it's around between the SYP and Direct, maybe like 900 to like 1,200 orders a day, um, which is a lot considering how like before when I was just doing Direct, it was like 300 or 400, um, but it just... The volume just blows through the roof. And, you know, I've had random people just messaging me. Oh, you're in New Jersey? I, I, I'm i in New Jersey. i got to come check your store out. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. The amount of eyes that gets on your store and your brand is astounding from just, just a, a... Cast a wide net with TCG Player, pretty much, if you're selling a lot of shit. So... That's that's the the game plan now. Everything changes. It's constantly evolving. It's constantly changing. Because this industry is constantly evolving, constantly changing. So, the game plan is to turn this up here into eBay and store stuff and the adjacent warehouse that's like 5 minutes away. Uh into TCG player only stuff. Uh, again, it'll it'll be a little bit of a 
growing pain because we would still have to fulfill out of here as well. So I got to figure out the logistics of that. But I think I'm getting off topic. <laughs> I ramble a lot, but the the thing is, the thing I wanted to say is everybody's situation is unique. Don't follow what I do. Don't follow what some bozo in Missouri or wherever says what you should do or what he's doing or they're doing or she's doing. Um, you got to do what you got to do. And you got to make money because in the end, trial and error beats everything because no one knows what your region, what your specific store can do. Uh, there's a store 20 minutes away from me. That flesh and blood scene, insane. Great. Me, nothing. Crickets. So I don't do it anymore. Like, there's no reason to do things that don't work for you. Um, again, our, our Yu-Gi-Oh scene has grown tremendously. Which is awesome. I didn't do it for such a long time. Pokemon scene, grown tremendously. It used to just be people just uh, shishers coming in, being like, you got the Zards, bro? Now it's actual players, actual people playing the game in my store, which is great. Um, yeah, man, you gotta just, it's trial and error. That's how I grew the business. Things that I did when I first opened, I no longer do now. Because it, I evolved from it. You'll just constantly be evolving, constantly be growing, constantly be figuring things out differently to up your revenue. And the only thing I could suggest and only tell people is hire fast. Please, don't do it alone. Hire someone. They ha Even if it's just to run the front end. They, I mean, you could find someone. Minimum wage, it's very easy. There's people out there that want to work. You could see an insane jump in my sales, like just from when I hired someone, one person. And I wish I did it sooner. I wish I did it day one, but I was scared. <sighs> yeah, that's it, man. Just talking to the camera, talking to you guys. This feels good. Uh, enjoying my morning coffee. I didn't feel like shipping right away, so I said, let me hop on and make a video. If I could say anything, it's hire fast and do what works for you. You have to do what works for you. Don't listen to anyone. Don't let people pollute your mind with what they did. You have to do what works for you. And if that's doing just in-store play, that works for you because you have a really, really good scene over there that everyone's dying to play, do it. If that's not working, you gotta do the massive, massive sales online. Every platform, go for it and that's what I did because the first eight months it it was rough not gonna lie it was rough then again I was also working full-time and working the store but still works for you man don't listen to anyone else I'll see you later bye